Greetings, everybody. It is March 2nd, 2023. <clears throat> uh, let's get the legalities out of the way. Uh, all my videos are for entertainment purposes only. Please like, share, subscribe, comment, you know, all that kind of stuff. If you want a reading, just email me. The email address is in the description box. Also is the Venmo link to my yarn fiber fund. So that, now that's all done. Uh, yeah, it's uh, definitely March weather today and tomorrow. It is coming in like a lion. So hopefully it will leave like a lamb. Although yesterday it was nearly 60 and sunny, but today it's dropping down, it's cloudy, and tomorrow we're supposed to get some really nasty butt weather. Like that sleety slush kind of crap. But hey, uh, yeah, I'm in a sweatshirt today. I've got stuff I've got to go do as soon as I get done with this. Uh, so hot topics, yeah, we'll getting into the Henry and Rachel nonsense and stuff and as always, I'll be bouncing around so you never know when info about those two idiots will pop in. So, hey, that's how a clairvoyance brain works. We can uh, start one way and then all of a sudden we're distracted. So, um, yeah, I just want to say that I do watch other video, other creators' channels, and I'm kind of laughing because a few weeks ago, something that I talked about, um, somebody else mentioned in their video and uh now you can see the pictures of that the coronation chair is a ratty piece of furniture and i wasn't fooling when i said hey there's lots of names carved in it and uh hey some people may have a snip fit but that's how it is i mean there's a school attached to westminster abbey and school boys yeah it's part of the thing to uh, spend the night in it and carve your name. So that's part of English schoolboys stuff. And there's names of guys who went to Eaton and Harrow. Plus there's all the other private schools in that area. And some people are still being privately tutored. Now, a um, couple hot topics that uh, someone called me, asked me about. And, uh, yeah, one of the Scandinavian countries is now telling people that if you're under 50, you don't need to have that flu liquid uh, punched into your, into your body. But they're still suggesting it for women who are expecting. And uh, from the ins information that I've gathered and read and people have talked to me about and asked me and I'm constantly saying and hearing, don't get it. Don't get it. It's part of the plan. They want to reduce population. And if you have to end a physical condition, instead of going to a clinic, just go get that um, that liquid put into your body and you've got more than a 50% rate of the parasite expelling itself out of your body or they're noticing a lot of <clears throat> premature deliveries and people it's not a good thing it was it's a way to reduce the population so um yeah it's not a good thing don't get the liquid put into you no matter who or what is saying these days so it's not not good and and uh then something else that caught my eye and it coincides years ago uh, a lot of states are now deciding to clear up a definition. And there's one state that's kind of in the center of the 
United States. It's kind of square and it's known as a, the bread basket because it's got a lot of open prairie land and uh, a lot of wheat is grown there. And even that's the state that, um, or at that time it was still a territory that Little House on the Prairie was kind of titled. This was the house on the prairie was in the state. And they've just passed a bill that's being signed into law stating that a person's gender is what your chromosome identification markers are at the time of birth. So if you are born and labeled a woman, female, that's what you are. No matter what you switch your body, no matter what kind of plastic surgery you have done to augment your body, if you are born a female, you're a female for the rest of your life. If you were born a male, you're a male for the rest of your life. And that's the state law down there. So hopefully other states will pick up on that and that will end a lot of confusion. So now for the BRF. Uh, it's all over the news pertaining that some people are being evicted. Well, they're not being evicted. You see, that's a crown property. And those people only had a lease on it. They were renters, tenants. And even here in the States, <clears throat> A landlord can decide whether or not they're going to renew a lease to a tenant. I mean, if you're a noisy person and causes trouble, your landlord may say, uh, I'm not renewing your lease for the next year, so you're going to have to find a new place to live. And that's exactly what has happened. They're not evicted. No. The landlord, the guy who's in charge of the lease on the house, has said, no. No. We're not renewing your lease, so you need to find someplace else to live. Well, if they ever do come over to visit, they're not going to be stuck staying in a hotel. There are guest accommodations and properties all over the UK, so um, they may be, t there's apartments that a lot of people use as their little pay de terre when they have to be in London. So, um, I mean, the Princess Royal's house is in Gloucestershire, and that's about 100 miles away from uh, London. So when she has to be there for back-to-back -back, uh, engagements, yeah, she has a, an apartment in St. James Palace. And after, during the separation and divorce between Charles and Diana, he set up residence in um, St. James. So he has an apartment and both of the boys had apartments, rooms in St. James Palace. So uh, instead of having this house that they're not using, when they come over, they'll be just tossed in a guest apartment over at St. James, which has plenty of security around it. Or they can stay at their dad's house where they can stay at Clarence house, which is loaded with security. And in a few years down the road, when the reno is complete, yeah, there's guest accommodations at Buckingham palace. So it's not like they won't have someplace to stay when they come over for, uh, basically they have to have their butts over there for a big occasion. So, so now basically a, since they're not the lease is not going to be renewed on a house that they barely use anywhere. I mean, I think in the past, since they left, they bolted in what, 2020, we can count on both using our hands and our toes, the number of days that they actually stayed there. Okay. They probably, yeah, they were here for three weeks during, after her majesty passed, but, um, they don't really use the property. So why should they, uh, why should the Crown, why should uh, KC3 renew the lease? Now they're squawking that uh, uh, His Royal Highness Prince Andrew, Duke of York, is being pushed out of Royal Lodge. Well, 
Royal Lodge is a really big place and it's scheduled to have major reno also because the interior infrastructure, I mean, the wiring and the plumbing and all that nonsense, once Buckingham Palace is finished, uh, Royal Lodge is the next one to get basically gutted to the walls and redone. And if he's living there, he's kind of going to pay for that. And that's going to run into like millions of dollars for the reno. So I have a feeling that it's been discussed that since he's now an empty nester, both of his daughters have moved out and they have their own residences, their own homes, uh, that, yeah, a lot of people, when they become an empty nester, they downsize. So since Frogmore Cottage, which is, it's not a little tiny thing cottage like people think in watch that movie holiday with Kate Winslet and uh, Cameron Diaz. It's not a little cottage like that. They call it a cottage, but actually it's a mansion. It has like five plus formal bedrooms, reception, formal reception rooms, like a front drawing room, a library, an office, a formal dining room, kitchen, plus all the other amenities that Rachel demanded to be put in, like a yoga studio, whatever. And so it's a pretty big, it's a mansion. So, okay, going down from 30 rooms to a house that is basically between 15 and 20 rooms. It's not like he's being crammed into a studio apartment. Plus, if you look at a land survey of Windsor Castle on the property, Frogmar Cottage's back garden opens up onto the back garden area that has the private entrance into the Windsor Castle apartments. So basically, he's moving to a house, if Andrew takes it, He's going to move into a house where he can just walk across his backyard to his brother's house. Get it? And when Royal Lodge is back after being gutted and renoed and brought back up to health and safety codes, since Catherine and William are now the Prince and Princess of Wales, they will have to be doing more formal entertaining and so forth. So it makes sense for them to move from Adelaide Cottage, which in itself is a mansion, to a property that can accommodate for more formal functions. So it's going to, it's basically a housing shuffle. So they're going to move. William and Catherine will take over Royal Lodge. Andrew is going to take over Frogmore. And that's Frogmore Cottage. Frogmore House is going under a big reno. And that's basically um, most likely that's always used for the Dowager Queen. So if and when Charles passes, if Camilla is still living, Camilla will then be extended the courtesy, the grace and favor house a frogmore house to live in until she passes and because frogmore house is usually the dowager the dower house um adelaide cottage um it wouldn't surprise me if it's then uh leased out to one of the york princesses to use as their uh london paid a tier their england house so it's musical houses it's a big family they've got a lot of properties and since andrew is even though he's still doing his stuff on the qt he's no longer in a position where he has to hold big business dinners so it makes sense for him to go into a smaller a smaller house so um it's yeah it's just musical things musical houses going on now, um, something that 
it was it hit me that uh yeah um the male child that they're claiming and um he's gonna be four now here in the united states they kind of have this thing that four-year-olds go start start this thing called pre-k pre-kindergarten so he's turning everybody knows he's turning four years old and um in may so come august the kid has to be registered for school he has to start his pre-k classes it's usually a morning or an afternoon session for free to, for um for a few hours basically it works with socialization and the kids learn their letters and numbers and colors in pre-k and they start learning small motor coordination how to write their name and so i'm just waiting it's usually held at a, a public school or a private school uh can't be a tutored situation they have to be in a licensed school environment so come august when this kid starts attending you know you can't have the entire school sign an nda agreement are you gonna have ever, because some kid is going to talk uh pre-k is usually held at a school that has grades from pre-kindergarten through fifth grade and fifth graders right now i mean those kids are little whizzes on uh their little phones and computers so hey would not surprise me if there's a fifth grader who snaps a pic and puts it up on his own social media so it's going to come out that something about that child i would say in the upcoming school year because he's going to have to be registered for pre-kindergarten uh, if he isn't already esconded, swooped back and taken back to the UK to, for school and so forth. Now, the other thing that's coming up is, uh, what's his face? Um, James H. is now talking about maybe it's time that a DNA test is done. People. Blood samples and everything were taken within hours of that kid being born. It's done at the hospital. All royal births, including especially those who are in direct line of the monarchy. Blood samples, footprints, fingerprints, genetic testing was done on that kid within hours of it being born. So it wouldn't surprise me if a DNA sample of his blood was matched to both Diana's and Charles. If he was not a legitimate heir, we would have known a long time ago. He would not have been able to get away with the nonsense that he is pulling now. All those tests have been done, just they aren't public about it. That's why there's a lot of stuff pertaining to the byproduct of possibly Rachel's frozen eggs because the royal family was not able to have somebody there as an observer for the birth and they were not able to get the samples that were needed on during right after birth because hey kids are checked for a multitude of stuff any woman who's going going into the hospital to have a child she knows that the kids are checked for PKU. They check for all sorts of crazy things. Immediately, a blood sample is taken of that child, A, to make sure just blood type, RH factor, if it's O negative, 
O positive, B, A, B, whatever combination, they need to know that kid's blood type and that blood work is run through for fast genetic mutation testing. So they already have Henry's DNA. It matches up to where it's supposed to be. Unfortunately, because they were so sketchy about the birth of the Henry's supposed children, the British government, the monarchy cannot consider those kids in line or give them titles because they're an unknown entity. So, something all that's going to pop up soon. So that's, that's what I've got for you today. And, um, Hope everybody's enjoying it. Uh, March weather is here, so we're going to have days that are like in 60 degrees, and then we can get hit with a freak snowstorm. It's called Midwest Chicago winter. Wait 10 minutes. And, uh, yeah, uh, we thankfully, um, the person that is nicknamed Beetlejuice Looney Tunes will not be the next mayor so people have to decide do we want a guy who whipped the school system into a really good situation or do we want a guy who follows a marxist agenda i'd rather have the guy who's gonna fund the police and fire department than the other guy where one of the first things he's gonna do is cut the budget for the police and fire department. If he does that, I hope he realizes that he may not have his 24 hour guard. Okay. That's enough. <laughs> have a good one. I'll see you on Saturday.